Welcome to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we will examine the final installment of our linear programming uh, discussion. Now, we have already discussed the theory behind how we uh, go from business problems and issues to coming up with a model. And then we also talked about how to go from the model to solving it using Excel. And we also further looked at the details of setting up Excel and how to solve them and interpret the output. And we looked at more applications from there on, right? So in this uh, final installment of linear programming discussion, we don't really look at additional applications. What I want to share with you is that we should be using this section to practice one skill, and that is to recognize the pattern of the problem. So our main aim is to develop some sort of pattern recognition in a way that is a little bit like identifying a, a, a familiar situation that we have been training for and, and immediately using the right tool to solve it without going from scratch and developing the whole theory or the whole model again. All right. So if we think about the um, first step and second step, uh, solutioning of a business situation we went from a very nebulous business problem right and in step one we formulate it translate it and nail down the details in a very crisp uh, well-defined mathematical model called linear programming model so that's step one and step two we proceed to solve that so the pattern recognition part of it I would share with you is the step one part Right, so we recognize this situation as, oh, I know, it is a transportation problem. Right? Or I look at this and I check the few properties and attributes. Right, I think this is an assignment problem. Or when we are talking about other uh, issues and gradually <clears throat> some of the characteristics make sense to fit into the shortest route problem. And then I recognize that, oh, wait, we are all just talking about a shortest route problem. And once we recognize uh, such pattern right that we are going to discuss today and become familiar with we straight away pull out the standard template and therefore answers and spend our time more fruitfully on working out the details uh, discussing customers concerns interpreting the results uh, with and together uh, with our customers so that will be much more value added to our business than to spend more time into uh, developing from scratch again the decision variables, the models, when indeed all the models belonging to the same category of problems would look alike. Yeah? So the idea is we want speed and efficiency because we can identify correctly the types of problem that this uh, particular situation on hand belongs to and therefore quickly uh, kind of uh, speed up the step one process which normally takes a lot of time back and forth fine-tuning uh, you know so that we don't miss out any important details but since these three categories transportation assignment and shoulders route happen so frequently in business lives of course they are not the only three but uh, they are so frequently encountered and <clears throat> we have time for these three topics uh, therefore we We'll talk about them and develop some efficiency right, in uh, identifying the situation and solving them at least up to the step one stage. And step two becomes way easier uh, because we'll be just doing uh, configuration of the software like Excel. Um, <clears throat> just to develop a little bit more familiarity with how we approach today's uh, discussion of, of uh, linear programming is to draw an analogy using, um, say, learning the distance formula equal to speed times time. All right, distance equal to speed time times time. So suppose we don't really know that distance equals to speed times time. So we are learning that, right? So, so this is a new situation. And we gather data, all right? And then we really do the measurement. And if we travel, at 10 kilometers per hour for one hour, 
we find that we covered 10 kilometers, right? And if we car, uh, uh, drive a car or cycle, and uh, perform that action for two hours, we find that we covered 40 kilometers per hour. And we can perform more, you know, uh, experiments and measurements and gather all these. All right. And uh, what we want is right now, I'm going to uh, drive my car at 50 kilometers per hour for uh, two and a half hours. Then the question is, how long will we have covered? So if we do this, then perhaps we, if we didn't know a formula and we didn't know how to multiply, right? Then what we need to do is uh, we actually go and experimentally determine, it, right? But after the experiment, after some amounts of work has been done and practice and the outcomes have been studied, we find that, hey, suppose if we uh, I identify speed as S and the time as T and D is the distance covered, we can actually represent uh, the whole category of problems called distance equals to speed times time. See that, right? So our business problem is determines distance given speed and time. And we didn't know how, so we experimentally determined, and then we come up with a template solution. We come up with a template solution and say that in future, if we need to determine distance, just tell me the speed and time, and our, our model is just speed times time, right? And straight away, you will get your answer distance. And of course, it's simple enough that we don't have to enter into Excel to calculate. We can do it in our mind. Uh, but the idea is the same. We found this formula as a solution, as a step one solution to model the situation, but we cannot solve it yet. When we plug in the numbers, if it's difficult, like 50 times 2.5, maybe it's difficult, uh, then we might have to use calculator. Yes, okay. So uh, in this case, we might say that this is, uh, what is that? Times 2 is 100, uh, so it's 125 kilometers. Yeah, so we'll plug in to the formula and calculate it and get our answer right away. So we don't go through the the uh, idea of hmm, let me see. I don't know how. So if ten kilometers is one uh, time and one hour gives us ten kilometers and twenty kilometers, you don't have to repeat that step, right? Pretty painful, re repetitive, and not truly value adding, right? And it's is totally uh, can be can be saved, can be cut off from our time consumed in solving this problem. So we will then therefore recognize that we are doing distance and use this pattern, this standard uh, template solution and apply to our situation, right? But what if the situation has some tweaks and bells and whistles here and there and says, uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not that our, our car started off from our reference point 10 kilometers off and we don't really want to adjust our reference point, right? So how long from the reference point would we have traveled if we go at 50 kilometers per hour for two and a half hours? Now, this is essentially a distance problem with a slight modification from our template situation when the offset was zero, but now it is 10, right? So how do we do that? Well, no problem, right? We can then spend our time to localize this template, this generic template, to our situation and say, well, it will be offset, right? Offset plus whatever is the formula, and therefore we have uh, 135 kilometers, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so we we have this very speedy, standard, generalized, and very applicable template solution to a big class of problems, uh, from which we can, of course, uh, add in further uh, adjustments, modifications, customizations to make the model fit the situation. But by and large, the whole discussion today right, is to recognize the, the pattern of the problem and apply the solution quickly without going from scratch, de de uh, defining the decision variables uh, one by one and think through again and spend all the time again, which uh, will all be saved if we uh, perform pattern recognition properly and apply the solutions correctly.